Well, does iron occur naturally or native? Well, not really, actually. Iron is generally too reactive that over time it reacts with the air and with water and so on, and it, well, forms rust. So you know that if you leave any iron lying around, you get this sort of red coloration on it. This is rust. And this is how we would normally find our iron, as iron oxide. Well, if you're really, really lucky, you can find a lump of iron, natural iron, lying around. And here's a lump here. This is actually an iron meteorite. So this lump of iron has travelled all the way through space, millions of miles, and landed on Earth, and it hasn't yet had a chance to corrode and react with the oxygen in the air. So this here is an iron meteorite. And we have another one here that's been sliced in half, and we can see a section of this here, and the little crystals of iron in here. So again, it hasn't yet had a chance to react with the oxygen. But when it does, it will form a mineral, and the mineral is called hematite. And here is some hematite here. It gets its name from, well, the word for blood, the heme part here, because it looks sort of blood-coloured. But interestingly enough, the um, blood itself contains a compound called hemoglobin, and this hemoglobin, at the centre of this hemoglobin, is an atom of iron. So there's a connection between the two. The iron here helps transport the oxygen around the body, around our bodies. Well, this is what, how you would find hematite if you dug it about the ground. Um, if you polish it up a bit, it looks a bit more like this. And this is how you may recognise hematite. Okay.